Right guys, welcome back. Um, so the baking process didn't take too long after all. Um, so here we are, we're looking at our low polygon mesh, but with the uh, normal map uh, baked onto it. And as you can see, it's brought back all that lovely uh, high frequency detail that we've lost. Uh, and as I said, a, 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 a very limited cost to us, but also we've gained the fact that this low resolution geometry will uh, will be more efficient when it comes to render time as well. So now all the maps are baked. You can see here in the mesh maps, it's populated this list with all the different maps that we've generated. And Substance Painter very, very usefully <laughs> places a big number four across them to indicate that this is four maps. Um, so if you've gone ahead and, and done a four by four tile, you will see a 16 in there, indicating that each map has, uh, you know, the 16 of them in total. And now in Substance Painter, we're essentially painting on our, on our geometry. All right. So, you know, if you were absolutely insane, you could go ahead and color it in. I wouldn't recommend doing that. That <laughs> would be incredibly tedious. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of um, the Quixel assets to texture our, our uh, terrain. So we're going to bring in a bunch of uh, Quixel surfaces for things like rock and grass and gravel and any, this is you know where it comes down to your own creativity uh, and what you want your terrain to look like I would be uh, I'd strongly advise you to reference your reference imagery and start to break down the the layers of uh, surfacing that you, you need to represent um, so let us get started I am going to delete that paint layer that I started painting on and I'm just going to very quickly in, in this video just sort of indicate how I work in in Substance Painter when it comes to working with things like this. I don't do any painting as such. Uh, what I tend to do is use fill layers. Okay, so if we put down a fill layer, there we go, nothing much seems to change. And I'm going to call this Base Rock. And the way I'm going to approach this as, as a texturing task is I'm going to layer things up from kind of the rock and the mud and then the grass and then some highlights and then maybe some details. So I'm gonna sort of step through it like that very logically in this layer stack. Okay, so for my base rock, if I bring up my properties of this, we can sort of change the color of it. So we'll go for a, a dark rocky color. Okay, we can set the roughness of it. Obviously, we don't want our terrain to be shiny like a mirror. So I'm just going to, likewise, we don't want it completely devoid of any form of uh, reflection. Otherwise, it's gonna look very plasticky and unnatural. So find a sort of a value around the 0.7. And, you know, if you wanna get super into it, you could take a look at PBR values and see what, you know, reflectivity certain prop, uh, certain surfaces have. I'm um, just going to desaturate that a little bit. All right. So I'm gonna move quickly through this first example. And then in the next video, probably what we'll do is we'll take a look at how we can work with Quixel assets. But I just want to sort of highlight the, the process that we're going to, to use throughout. Um, so with our base rock, then say I add another fill layer and we'll call this base rock uh, dark. Uh, no, we'll go with light so we can see what we're doing. All right. So this is, we're going to create like a highlight layer on that base rock. Um, so obviously what we've done here, you're thinking back to Photoshop, all, all we've done is we've completely overwritten our base rock with this. So we can take advantage of masking. Okay, so if we right click on our uh, highlight layer and add a black mask to it, you can see all of that layer now has been completely masked and we're back to looking through it almost. Okay, so what we can do with the with the mask selected is we can apply generators and we can apply lots of different functions that uh, Substance Painter has to fill this mask for us. And a technique that I like to use when I'm just sort of roughing things out and just getting some simple sort of shapes set up is make use of a generator. So I'm going to right click on that mask 
and then go to add generator okay and this has given us a, a little sort of sub layer underneath our mask and it's applied to the mask it's not applied to the surface it's actually applied to the mask and in the generator we could just select something like I don't know dirt seems like a good place to, to start and as you can see it's it's sort of it's added some value into that mask so we can now see through our highlight layer to the layer underneath and we can you know play around with the with the settings to get sort of what we want what we're looking for um, and just get start building up your look that way so just play around and get something that kind of works and obviously we don't want our we don't want our highlight to be perfectly white so we can come back and select the actual material this time and um, we don't need to worry about metal normal or height so we can turn off those channels so we're just worried about roughness and color i'll put the roughness value sort of somewhere around there and then we can start bringing in some color information based on our based on our reference and the look that we're trying to achieve okay so maybe for a highlight we could go something like that I don't know and that's essentially the approach that we're going to take in the next couple of videos we'll be layering up lots and lots of different um, quixel assets and then using masking to uh, to blend between them all right so we'll be using we'll take a look at um, lots of different other generators that we can use so very quickly before we go we'll do one more let's do say we'll call this I don't know grass and we'll obviously set it to be a grassy color yeah so as you can see just to really emphasize the point this grass material now is on everything so again we can apply that black mask to it and then let's apply another generator to it so let us add uh, another generator and this time we'll go with position all right so it's going to analyze the mesh and it's going to mask it based on position okay so at the moment you can't really see what's happening so if I just crank up the contrast and then you can see how I can position I can position this mask based on um, this balance slider here I want to invert it because I want the grass to be sort of on the ground and then just find somewhere where we can put grass in this kind of lowland area and once you've sort of blocked out where you want that to be you can start dropping the contrast to sort of blend between them all right so maybe just tighten that up a little bit And maybe add a little bit of ah see now this is we start to come into um, one of the drawbacks of working with UDIMS you see if we start introducing blur we start to lose these edges along our UDIM tile so we need to be wary of that at all times and just make sure that the functions we're adding are you know are not going to damage our our carefully set up UDIM tiles okay so we could say something like that for a base grass and then you know we don't have to stop there we can add another generator to that and perhaps we want to add uh, some more dirt okay but rather than it affecting everything we can tell it just like in Photoshop we can use blending modes to um, impact the layers below so if we select that to multiply you can see now we're, we're actually multiplying that dirt just onto our grass there so again we can play around with these values to get something that works for us and then you can see very quickly we're starting to build up layers of interesting shape and color and, and, and things like that so have a play around with that what I'd recommend you do before you start throwing in quixel assets and just get used to working in this way see if you can layer up lots of different uh, simple colored materials to get uh, to get something that's close to your reference imagery uh, and in the next video uh, we'll take a look at how we can implement uh, some quixel assets uh, so yeah thanks for watching and I'll uh, see you there